In our previous sessions, we looked at the centrifugal pump, its workings, construction, and its basic principle. We examined how the kinetic energy is related to the continuity equation, and how the change in area has an impact on the tangential velocity. And this in turn has an impact on how the kinetic energy is converted from that into a pressure energy. We also looked at an example in the previous session. This example involves taking fluid from a sump up into a delivery tank. We went through the basic calculations that was associated with that. Today we're going to look at another example. This time it's question 33 and once again it's taken from the same textbook as the previous example, Fox and others, fluid mechanics. So to begin with, let's examine the question in itself. We are told that the pump is operating at 1750 revs per minute in its transfer of water from a sump to a discharge tank. We are told that the diameters of the suction pipe and the delivery pipe are 150 millimeters each. We are also told that some of the data has been tabulated for various different tests. We're given the requirements of the electric motor, which is a three phase device and it runs on 460 volts and it has a power factor of 0.875. It has an overall efficiency of 90%. Just examining the diagram, we also must take note that we have got a difference in the heights of where the pressure gauges are, no, are located. So we've got ZS, which is on the suction side, and ZD, which is on the delivery side. And there's a difference of 600 millimeters between each of those. So we must take that into account when we are doing our calculations later on. So the fluid has been moved from our suction tank through the centrifugal pump up through the delivery pipe. Looking at the table that we have been provided, we find that we've got a volumetric flow rate, we've got a suction pressure, we've got a discharge pressure, and we have got the amps that the motor requires. We're asked to calculate the net delivered head and the pump efficiency at a volumetric flow rate of 227 meters cubed per second. We're also asked to plot the pump head the power input and the efficiencies as functions of volumetric flow rate. Before we move on, we need to just identify what we're going to be doing here. So this is the, the row in which we need to extract values for. We have the volumetric flow rate, we have the suction pressure, we have the delivery pressure, and we have the amps of the motor. So these are the components, or these are the values that we're going to require in doing this problem. To solve this problem, we need to look at what we are given it to start with. So we're told what the data is, we're given that in a tabular form, and we were given a diagram that represents the pumping arrangement. The one thing that was clear to us that we pointed out earlier, that the suction gauge and the delivery gauge were set by a 600 millimeter distance. We're going to need to correct for this when we do our calculations. So what assumptions can we make? Well, we can assume that it's steady and incompressible flow. We can also assume that the uniform flow at each section exists. We're going to assume that U1 is going to equal to U2. We were not given any details about the velocities at the suction side or at the discharge side. We weren't given enough data in order to identify what these may be. So we're just going to assume that they are equal. And as I mentioned, we're going to need to correct all heads to the same elevation. The suction gauge and the delivery gauge were separated by 600 millimeters. We were asked to find the pump head and efficiency for a volumetric flow rate, 227 meters cubed per S. Right? I'm using Q here for volumetric flow rate. Remember, we often use V dot, the, the volumetric flow rate, V with a dot over it represents Q as well. We're asked to identify the pump head, the power input, the efficiency as functions of volumetric flow rate, and we're asked to plot our results. So our governing equations, under the same governing equations that we had in our previous problem, the, the work required to develop the head is going to be the density times the volumetric flow rate times the gravity times the head of the pump. Right? The efficiency of the motor is going to be the work that's involved in developing the head divided by the rate of work in the motor. And then we we'll also have our equation to represent the pump head. And it's the very same as we did in the last one. But before we, before we go on any further, let's have a look at that equation and let's see what's involved in it. 
In order for us to actually approach this problem, we're going to need to manipulate this equation. So we're going to start by manipulating this. But we also know that according to our assumptions, our velocities are going to cancel. Our velocities u1 and u2 are going to be equal. So we're going to say that the two of them are going to be the same. So therefore, our equation is going to be hp is equal to the pressure divided by the density times gravity plus the height, and this is on the discharge side, minus the pressure divided by the density times the gravity plus the height on the suction side. Now, we also said in our assumption that we were going to need to correct for elevation change. So therefore, we need to correct for Zs, the Zs, and the Zd. Right, so we're going to have to do that in a, in a step. So we're going to make an assumption here, and we're going to correct then in the next steps. So we're going to say that the Zs will be on the same level when we do this correction. Right, so if we, if we make that assumption, therefore we can say that HP is going to be equal to P, and this is going to be P2 minus P1 over rho G. And that's where this side of our equation is going to be represented by two, and this side of our equation is going to be represented by one. So once we make that assumption, and once we go through that, that type of uh, analysis, we can then look at how does our system work out for us. So we already said we have said uh, u2, u, u1, and that's the equation I'm just after developing there. And that's where the discharge and suction pressures have been corrected to the same level. So how do we go about correcting those? Well, it's going to be very straightforward. We're going to say P1 is going to be equal to Ps plus the density times gravity times Zs. And P2 is going to be equal to Pd plus the density times gravity times Zd. And when you do that analysis or when you do those calculations, you will find that this one will work out at minus 36.03 by 10 to the 3 pascals. And this one here will work out at 238.82 by 10 to the 3 pascals. The next set, the next step then, is going to be looking at calculating the pump head. Is we're going to use the equation that we developed just a minute ago which is HP is equal to P2 minus P1 over rho G. And when you do this calculation, I'm not going to be going through the steps. You can fill in the values yourself here. It's going to be 28.05 meters. Then the next step we're going to need to do is calculate the hydraulic power that's delivered to the fluid. And the hydraulic power that is delivered to the fluid is going to be W dot H the rate of work involved in developing the head is equal to the density of the fluid times the volumetric flow rate times gravity times HP, right? And that's going to be equal to 17.3 by 10 to the 3 watts. And just recall, Q is equal to V dot. We made that, we, we, we called the volumetric flow rate Q earlier, so I'm just going to define it here. Q is equal to V dot as well. Next, we need to figure out what is the power into the motor. So the power into the motor is going to be given by P in, and that's going to be equal to the efficiency of the motor multiplied by the square root of 3, multiplied by the power factor which we were given in the question, multiplied by the, electrics, the electrical supply to the motor, which we were told was 408, uh, 460 volts, multiplied by the amps. And when we do that calculation, we're going to find that the motor, the power going into the motor, is going to be 
5 by 10 to the 3 watts. Remember, P in is equal to W dot of our motor. That's how we often define it here. The final step that we need to do is look at the efficiency that's associated with this system. And the efficiency is going to be given as the work that's required to develop the head divided by the work that the motor does in driving the pump. And that's going to be equal to 0.84. Now that is the calculations that's required in doing this, this problem. In order to do the plots, it's a matter of reperforming these calculations. In our next session, I anticipate looking at how to construct the velocity triangles. We're going to look at performing some of the basic calculations associated with these and how to identify what will, is happening within the impeller.